khususnya jargon 2020 triple 2020 jadi jargon 2020 2020 itu selalu kita sosialisasikan kepada masyarakat kita anggap sebagai golden time Well, we're here in Indonesia because Indonesia is a very high risk area for natural hazards. It's got a subduction zone that wraps pretty much around the entire country. And this means that it's perennially affected by major earthquakes, by tsunamis, and then associated with that, you have volcanic eruptions, you have landslides. It's a geologically very active place, but the people here oftentimes don't have the resources or the education to be able to help mitigate these hazards. So the idea of why we're here is that we want to better understand these hazards, where they come from, how often they might occur, how they might affect the area. And then also we want to help inform the people of that and help them to better plan and prepare for these hazards so that when they do inevitably return, it's not something that's catastrophic for the people. They're able to recover from it and move on and mitigate their losses. We really need to know what the potential is for different areas of this city to produce strong shaking, weak shaking, moderate shaking. Nice. Pachitan is a really proactive city when it comes to disaster mitigation. They're really doing as much as they can to prevent these hazards from creating disasters in their city. So that's part of the reason why we chose them because we know that we know that the information that we're going to be producing will be actively applied. So we've taken measurements throughout the valley, we've taken measurements up on the hills, and our goal is to be able to tell the people of Pachitan where they should be focusing their efforts and what portions of the city need their attention the most. A lot of the structures need to be reinforced, but they need to start somewhere. My love for Indonesia started just through reading about the active tectonics of Indonesia, about all the active faults, how there were more earthquakes and more active volcanoes, more tsunamis than any other country in the world. And because that's what I was interested in, I was drawn to Indonesia. And also because the more I tried to find out about the geological evolution of Indonesia, the more difficult it was because <clears throat> there wasn't a lot known. Um, there was a lot of work done early on by the Dutch and then after Indonesia got its independence, very little work had been done. And so those two things, a place where you can actually see active processes, you can see tectonics in action and a place where there's still a lot of fundamental questions that aren't answered. Kami sebenarnya sangat berterima kasih sekali karena uh, mereka kan itu kan bagian dari akademisi, peneliti. Jadi kita sendiri sebenarnya orang BBD itu kan bukan ahli bencana. Jadi orang BBD itu bukan ahli bencana, tetapi kita bekerja dalam hal penanggulangan bencana. Jadi kalau semuanya yang terkait, misalnya kalau semuanya Pacitan terdiri dari 12 kecamatan ya, di mana kita mempunyai potensi bencana yang sangat tinggi. Di wilayah hulu kita punya potensi longsor, tengah banjir, sedangkan di wilayah pesisir selatan kita punya potensi gempa dan tsunami. Nah, uh, akademisi peneliti itu sangat-sangat uh, banyak sekali membantu kita dalam hal kajian. Karena dari kajian mereka itu nanti bisa menjadi referensi kita untuk uh, dijadikan pengambilan keputusan khususnya nanti pemerintah daerah harus bisa berbuat seperti apa. Okay, yeah.
Yeah, it's not recording. One of the, the amazing things that I've been able to do here, as you mentioned, is uh, be able to take a drone, um, get some photos and some video from the air, which usually you're not able to get um, without that kind of technology. And um, in a couple of those places, we were actually able to um, fly certain patterns and uh, make sure to get photos of different angles of in this case, a couple collapsed uh, school buildings. Um, using those pictures, we can actually go in later with software and make a 3D reconstruction of those buildings. Something we can go back into with uh, detail and with geometry, accurate um, measurements and things you can take and uh, be able to continually study the damage of the earthquake beyond the scope of when this is all gonna be you know, cleared away, new buildings built we still learn from our trip and the data that we take here uh, going into the future so we can help out more and not have to come back um, and get more data, if that makes sense. Yang di atas ditarik, ditarik, ditarik sampai nggak bisa lagi. Yeah, I think I've definitely learned a lot about uh, the people here and about myself. And I think some a big takeaway for me is just the people's spirit, just how happy they are and how cheerful they are, even though they might be under hard circumstances. They continue to have a positive attitude. That's really impactful to me, as well as just doing good things just brings joy. Serving other people is really, brings me joy and brings, I can tell, for at least my team, it, it brings my team joy as well. So I'm happy I'm doing something that's worthwhile, that I'm not just selling, selling systems in California or something, but I'm actually helping people and helping save lives. My role here has mostly been giving presentations in schools, to local communities, at viharas, at um, different places where people gather. And so I've done a lot of that. I think we've been able to teach probably 3,000 students, maybe more, and most of those we've been able to survey as well to get a feel for their understanding of natural disasters so that we can better meet their needs and kind of cater what we're doing here and our research to what's gonna help them the best. So that's been my role. Um, it's taken me from the beginning in Pachitan and Jokja area where we did some work, um, then going to Lombok, where there was a big earthquake that happened last year, and so we were able to make a unique presentation that, that has specifically helped them.
into a mohawk. Yeah, I'm making it good. With Neosporin. Oh, yeah. Neosporin. <laughs> I just use Neosporin for my hair there gel in the morning. Neosporin on it? Okay. The main focus of my research is the Banda Islands, which are an archipelago in East Indonesia in the Banda Sea. And these are a set of islands that are surrounded on three sides by a subduction zone. Basically, the Australian and the Pacific plates are subducting underneath the Eurasian plate. And this means that they've had um, lots of instances of major earthquakes and associated tsunamis throughout their history, even in the past few hundred years when we've had written records of the islands. They've had several major events that have effectively destroyed all the settlements there and killed large amounts of people. My goal is to help better understand those hazards and then to help mitigate them by educating the people. One of the things I'm gonna be doing is taking what's called VS-30 measurements around the islands. VS-30 is essentially a measure of the velocity of sound waves or earthquake waves, that's sound waves, through the subsurface down to a depth of 30 meters. And through this, you can make estimations about how severe earthquake shaking might be in a particular area. An earthquake is only one magnitude everywhere you feel it. But how hard the shaking is, is a function of how far you are from the epicenter, but also it's a function of the soil beneath you. What, what kind of bedrock do you have under you? How deep is it? What kind of sediment do you have? And VS-30 is a way of measuring that. Di Ambon sama di Banda ini ada kita ada riset yang berjudul Analisis Risiko Spasial Gempa Bumi dan Tsunami di wilayah Maluku dan Maluku Utara terutama untuk fasilitas pendidikan sekolah. Metode kita awalnya memodelkan risiko itu dengan software GIS dengan pemodelan GIS untuk mendapatkan area-area uh, mana saja sih yang terkena bencana atau dampak dari bencana gempa bumi dan tsunami. Kemudian kita intersek dengan data-data fasilitas yang ada, yang diberikan dan didapat beberapa sekolah-sekolah misalnya yang berada di zona tsunami. Nah kebetulan kita melakukan survei lapangan juga untuk di Maluku dengan area Ambon dan Bandanera. Untuk di Maluku Utara nanti akan di Ternate. Di pulau ini kita melakukan survei lapangan berupa pemotretan foto udara dan juga geotagging seperti mengambil koordinat-koordinat dari fasilitas yang ada di sini seperti fasilitas sekolah, fasilitas kesehatan seperti rumah sakit atau puskesmas, tempat ibadah, kemudian layanan masyarakat lain seperti polsek, kantor desa, balai desa. Tujuannya apa? Supaya kita bisa tahu tempat-tempat fasilitas umum itu tepat berada di mana dan apakah tempat-tempat itu terkena dampak dari bencana gempa atau tsunami yang mengancam di wilayah Maluku atau Maluku Utara. Hasilnya nanti, kedepannya rencananya akan saya gunakan menjadi data dalam tesi saya untuk kemudian saya olah dan untuk menentukan model evakuasi terbaik yang harus dilakukan oleh masyarakat di sini apabila bencana tersebut menimpa di wilayah-wilayah mereka. Karena Banda ini termasuk daerah yang apa ya bisa dibilang remote area sih, udah kecil pulaunya, jauh gitu kan. Jadi kalau misal kita ngambil dari hasil geotek itu kan hasil survei lapangan jadi kita bisa ngeliat secara langsung oh ada ini ada SD ini satu dua tiga empat sedangkan kalau misal kita cuman sekedar ngeliat dari Google Maps itu kadang-kadang beberapa lokasi nggak bisa ngebaca itu sebenarnya apa ada sekolah nggak sih ada rumah sakit nggak sih ada puskesmas nggak sih ada polsek nggak nah, kita jadi nggak tahu sebenarnya kalau misal lewat Uh, survei sekunder, makanya dibutuhinlah survei primer menggunakan uh, GPS NLT itu. Terkait analisisnya ke depan kan, dari hasil peta ini, terus hasil dari 
kita tahu berapa fasilitas umum yang ada nah mungkin jadi semakin ningkatin apa ya istilahnya uh, ya kajian nilai hasil kajian mungkin ya jadi kita tahu kapasitasnya kita bisa ngitung nanti terus gimana sih tingkat kerentanan yang ada apalagi kalau survei lapangan dan kita ngambil data foto udara kita jadi tahu juga kan apa daerah di banda ini sebenarnya seperti apa secara umum gitu Saya juga sama-sama membantu dalam tim ini mulai dari sosialisasi kesiapsiagaan bukan hanya di sekolah tapi juga di uh, komunitas baik itu lingkungan masyarakat maupun di lembaga keagamaan. Selain uh, sosialisasi kesiapsiagaan bencana, uh, saya juga turut bantu dalam proses VSRT, pengukuran VSRT dan uh, untuk pengukuran VSRT ini sendiri Memang merupakan hal yang baru bagi saya, karena memang latar belakang pendidikan saya sama sekali bukan geologi. Jadi setiap kali bergabung dengan tim WAVE, uh, tetap ada pelajaran baru yang bisa saya pelajari. Dan khusus untuk tahun ini, saya bisa mempelajari bagaimana cara pengukuran VSRT, kemudian apa sih manfaat dari VSRT itu sendiri. Dan tentunya selama uh, bekerja sama dengan Profesor Ron maupun dengan teman-teman yang lain, Uh, banyak hal yang bisa diambil untuk mengembangkan kapasitas diri sendiri maupun juga untuk uh, kepentingan masyarakat ke depan. Pendekatan yang kita lakukan adalah memberi pengetahuan kepada masyarakat tentang apa yang bakal terjadi berdasarkan catatan sejarah. Jadi tim ini Salah satu keistimewaan tim ini adalah Prof. Heris adalah yang berhasil mempublikasikan data-data 400 tahun ke belakang tentang catatan sejarah paleo e, tsunami dan kegempaan. Sehingga e, kami bisa mempunyai contoh-contoh peristiwa yang bisa diberikan kepada masyarakat untuk membangun pengetahuan, untuk membangun e, kapasitas. Sehingga kekhawatiran, ketakutan masyarakat, akan peristiwa yang akan terjadi atau boleh terjadi atau seperti apa kejadiannya itu menjadi sesuatu yang e, penting kami kami e, sampaikan kepada masyarakat sehingga masyarakat itu akan menjadi tambah pinter pengetahuannya lebih baik sehingga dia bisa bertindak lebih proaktif dan itu yang kami sebut sebagai e, virus proaktif kenapa kami menyebutnya proaktif karena kami juga merasa dengan keterbatasan pemerintah dalam hal menyebarkan sosialisasi dan sebagainya itu eh, sampai saat ini sikap-sikap proaktif itu belum belum dibangun dengan dengan eh, baik dan sistematis. There's also some other spin-offs that have, that, that have occurred. But ARC is, is probably the one that has uh, gained the most a attention be because of the unique approach that's taken by reaching out to people that have lots of different gifts and talents and having them bring those uh, to the literally to the table and use them to express how disaster mitigation is everybody's business. It's not just geoscientists, it's not just humanitarian workers, it's everybody's business to try to reduce risk.
so I, I'm doing mentored research with Dr. Harris, and uh, I've been helping do uh, with VS30 measurements and digging trenches, and also um, socialization in supporting the group who gives the presentations at the schools. I went through the Wickman catalog and helped uh, look at the dig events. And uh, I also made a map using GIS of all the historic events from the Wickman catalog. Um, so Dr. Harris originally wanted me to help him translate records um, from Dutch into English, since I know Dutch. And so that's kind of how I got started. He would give me different records to translate, and eventually I just kind of morphed into finding the documents myself and then plotting the earthquakes with GIS. Yeah, so the Wickman catalog just goes up until 1857, I think, and the documents I found kind of fill in the gap. So they go from the 57 to like the 1920s. So kind of a gap we have before we had seismic data.